Пані та панове, доброго ранку усім. Перша прес-конференція на сьогодні – це презентація результатів дослідження впливу, впливу забруднення повітря на здоров'я населення та довкілля у п'яти промислових містах України. У нас в гостях Марек Шир, автор дослідження, хіміко-технологічний інститут «Дашвіл Сітіз в Україні». Uh, and we have Marek Scheer, uh, author of the study of the University of Chemistry and Technology uh, from Prague, Jitka Strakova, the co-author of the study. She represents the Department of Toxic Substances and Waste. Uh, Maxim Soroka, the co-author of the research, research and research, uh, he works at laborat Research Laboratory Environmental Protection in the Railway Transport. Maxim Borodin, member of the Mariupol City Council. Uh, Irina Pirogova, chairman of the regional organization All Ukrainian Ecological League from Zapata. Zaporozhye, Anna Zaporizhya, Anna Ambrosova, Public Initiative, Stop Polluting Krivirih, and Jana Basista, Project Manager of an Online Map of Sources of Environmental Pollution in Ukraine, Detox Ukraine. Uh, good morning. We uh, are glad to welcome you here and we would like to inform you in detail, as we uh, already uh, have uh, promised uh, before, uh, with uh, to to uh, give you the details of the research uh, on uh, the environmental pollution uh, performed by our Czech colleagues. Uh, we uh, mostly uh, uh, deal on the issues of uh, the uh, uh, pollution uh, of uh, the air. Uh, we uh, cooperate uh, with Arnica, a private company uh, that uh, is located in uh, the Czech Republic, uh, and uh, in cooperation with them and uh, the uh, technological, or, uh, the University of Chemistry and Technology of Prague, we have uh, been conducting a project uh, Stop Polluting uh, Ukraine. The first, uh, we have done uh, two researches so far. The first one on uh, the uh, pollution of uh, sand uh, and uh, uh, deposits, bottom deposits in the rivers of Ukraine. And the second one uh, on uh, the dioxines uh, uh, or dioxines uh, in uh, the detected in uh, the eggs. Uh, hen eggs uh, in a number of uh, oblasts or administrative areas of U regions of Ukraine. So uh, there have been a number of uh, samples taken, they were analyzed, their chemical composition was analyzed, and uh, based uh, on uh, these results uh, we uh, conducted our research, completed our research uh, with a number of conclusions. Uh, this project is uh, being implemented uh, uh, with uh, support or under the auspices of uh, the program Transition that uh, is in turn sponsored by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Czech Republic. And uh, uh, let uh, us listen to our first speaker, Mr. Marek Scherer, who is uh, the representative of the University of Chemistry and Technology. Uh, it's a Prague University. Uh, I am glad that I can particip participate on that event. Um, my name is Marek Schier. I am from the Institute of uh, I'm from the Faculty of Environmental Chemistry and Technology and I participate on sampling campaigning during that project and also uh, we made uh, chemical analysis uh, in our laboratories at the University of Chemistry and Technology in Prague. So I would like to briefly introduce uh, the plan of the project, the sampling plan. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, sampling plan, something about methodology and main findings uh, that we revealed. So uh, it was briefly introduced also um, in, in the introduction. Uh, the aim of this study is to evaluate and to monitor uh, the possible pollution caused by heavy metals uh, in uh, five uh, industrial cities in Ukraine. Um, I can name the cities, uh, namely it's Kharkov, Dnipro, uh, Zaporizhzhi, Kriviroch and Mariupol. Uh, and we focus mostly uh, on the potential pollution uh, by me heavy metals and at, uh, that uh, which is caused by uh, metallurgical industry, power plants and coke production. Uh, so, something about sampling. Uh, during the campaign, 
company, we uh, sampled more than 88 samples of two kinds of metrics. Uh, we focus on river sediments, which serves as a, a deposit for possible pollution, and we also took uh, samples of sand and material from uh, children playground, because uh, these children playground should represent the most clean uh, part of the cities or, or, or that areas, because uh, yeah, they, they serve for uh, playing of children, which are very vulnerable uh, to possible pollution. Um, not only heavy metals were uh, the, uh, our aim, we also determine petroleum hydrocarbons. That's a group of uh, organic contaminants. The name is petroleum hydrocarbons, but they also can be produced by different uh, different kind of industry. They um, mm -hmm. and the last uh, groups of contaminants are persistent organic contaminants, mostly chlorinated uh, persistent organic pollutants. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so uh, and based on the measured data, we prepared uh, an assessment of the pollution or evaluation of pollution based on various legal standard, based on some auxiliary criteria which are valid, uh, or based on levels of pollution which are valid in Ukraine, in the European Union, and also in Czech Republic. We also compare the concentration of pollutants with some background levels, with samples which were taken in Ukraine, and then we also made a health risk calculation based on that content of pollutants. So, uh, what are the main fundings of that study? I think I can say that uh, pollution, which is uh, caused by metals and organic pollutants uh, represent a threat to human health at some places. Be uh, in heavy metals, in sediments, I think we can state that the, there is a widespread pollution of uh, some of them, of cadmium and zinc. We also focus on other heavy metals like arsenic and lead uh, and uh, <coughs> Uh, and so on, I will, I, I will discuss it is later. So in general, the most widespread pollution is caused by cadmium and probably the likely source of that pollution is metallurgical industry and production of coke. Most polluted sediments were found in the cities, uh, Kharkov and uh, Zaporozhia. Then, based on uh, health risk analysis, I think that the most hazardous uh, contaminant of the environment here is uh, cadmium and arsenic, because arsenic also um, arsenic is considered as potential carcinogen carcinogenic compounds. So that's that's uh, mm, the, that's one one of the findings. Heavy metals uh, in playgrounds. I think uh, that we found some places which are polluted by lead and zinc, but only a small portion of samples can be considered as uh, that exceed some levels for pollution, uh, which are defined in Czech criteria for the quality of soil, uh, for the quality of sand in sand pits, because there are no some valid criteria in Ukraine, uh, which can be compared uh, with, the, with the values for quality of sand from, uh, or material from sand pits and from kindergartens. So just a few samples exceed the limits. The most polluted sand was found in Dnipro and Mariupol. And the concentration of lead really represents a possible threat to uh, children's health. So I think the very important finding is uh, that there is a widespread pollution by petroleum hydrocarbons. A lot of sediments which were taken from the rivers contains uh, an, or an exceed levels of pollution defined by, uni, uh, defined by uh, criteria defined by Environmental Protection Agency. 
which uh, exceed limits which are defined in Czech legislation, and we can also compare the uh, concentration of that kind of pollutants with the soil quality criteria uh, which are valid in Ukraine. And a lot of samples exceed the limits, a lot, sometimes 10 times or more. Uh, most extensive pollution by uh, organic hydrocarbons was found in Kharkiv in Zaporozhia. Uh, there, there were also uh, another kind uh, of pollutants that, that were found in mm -hmm, that were found in uh, some uh, materials sampled from playgrounds, and there were residues of DDT. Probable, probably it's caused by some previous activities and by previous using of DDT, and it's caused mainly because of the sand is not changed or have have never been changed at some places. So, uh, and final conclusions and statements and recommendation. What can I recommend? I think because the uh, monitored area is very large, the potential, um, the, the area with potential contamination and the industrial area is very large. And even if we took uh, limited numbers of samples, we revealed some places uh, with uh, very high contamination. So it's likely probable, more, it's more than probable there are, that there are more sites with some contamination on the same level or maybe higher. So it's necessary to continue with analysis and to extend that research, not only for the metrics uh, that was sampled, just sediments and sent from sand pits, but also take samples of soil and also some uh, organic samples and identify the possible pathways that how can these pollutants can enter human body and what are the possible uh, pathways of uh, or ways of transport of that pollution. So I think that also one of the main aim of that project is strengthening the discussion because it's a global problem. The pol pollution of the environment is a global pro problem. So we should cooperate on that en environmental issues together, governmental, non-governmental organizations and uh, private companies and academic sphere. Uh, I think we can also apply very fast some uh, measures for the protection of the population. For example, to change the sand in sand pits, to change the sand with high portion of uh, dust particles that can easily absorb uh, organic and inorganic pollutants from the atmosphere for dif different kinds of material. And what can be discussed, it's obvious. I think it's necessary to improve or implement some better environmental technologies for the treatment of uh, fumes and wastewaters. So thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, to our expert Marek Shir uh, for his detailed presentation. Uh, the data and uh, the text of the research itself uh, is uh, available online. Uh, an executive summary of that research uh, you can find printed out uh, at the table uh, at the entrance to the, this uh, conference room. and. Uh, uh, you also f can find the links uh, uh, there in the text of the research uh, where uh, you could see the data, the uh, raw data, for example, on the sand contamination in Ukraine, translated into uh, uh, Ukrainian. Uh, uh, now I would like to give the floor over to a specialist from uh, the commercial uh, company uh, Arnica, uh, to Ms. Uh, Yitka Strakova, uh, who is a specialist on toxic substances, and uh, she will inform us about the situation in uh, Mariupol, Zaporizhia, and uh, Kharkiv. Uh, so the floor is yours. Gentlemen, I want to correct a bit the announcement. My name is Itka Strakova, and I am honored to welcome you at this press conference on the behalf of Arnica Association. We are a non-governmental organization based in the Czech Republic. Our miss mission is to protect human health and the environment against toxic chemicals 
including persistent organic pollutants, which I am going to talk about in my presentation. Uh, in addition to sand and sediment samples, Arnica also analyzed uh, hen's eggs, in particular uh, turkey and chicken eggs, from three pollution hotspots uh, in eastern Ukraine. Namely, it was Kharkiv, Mariupol and uh, Krivirich. Uh, as you may know, persistent organic pollutants are man-made chemicals which have never occurred in the nature naturally. They are man-made, they are highly toxic and highly persistent. It means there are no natural ways how they can be decomposed. They are accumulated in uh, fat tissue of animals and in fat tissue of uh, human beings. We did analyze poultry eggs and analyze them for the content of chlorinated dioxins. Chlorinated dioxins are one representative, one group of representatives of persistent organic pollutants. We did choose chicken eggs because they are very good indicator, very sensitive indicator of air and soil pollution. When uh, some dust and fumes are being emitted from industrial uh, plants. Those da dust particles hold toxic persistent organic pollutants including dioxins. Those dust particles are then being transmitted into the open landscape and are being uh, sedimented um, on the soil surfaces. Then, when free-range chicken feed on soil organism, they also consume those dust particles with toxic uh, chemicals and incorporate them into their fat tissues. Those chemicals are then being transported into the chicken eggs. What's important to say, we did choose also the chicken egg because they are a very important part of Ukrainian diet. So. Uh, contamination of chicken eggs illustrates uh, contamination pathway of the pollution from industrial uh, plants to a uh, human body. And here uh, I am presenting the results uh, of our research. For you to understand, in the last column on the right, you will see legislative thresholds, which uh, are valid in Ukraine, Ukraine and also in the EU. All three samples of chicken eggs uh, did exceed uh, maximum levels for dioxins and dioxins like polychlorinated biphenyls in foodstuff. Uh, in addition to that, we also calculated average uh, daily intake of dioxins when Ukrainian public consume the usual amount of the eggs, we, uh, the numbers of, on the average consumption of eggs we found uh, in some um, expert um, uh, reports. And based on those calculations, we did find out that um, samples of eggs from uh, Kharkiv are almost three times exceeding tolerable daily intake of dioxins by adults and almost six times exceed tolerable daily intake uh, by children. For Mariupol, it's uh, almost um, uh, 13 faults uh, exceeding of this tolerable daily intake and for, sorry, uh, 1.3 uh, fold uh, the tolerable intake and almost three time, um, uh, three time tolerable uh, daily intake for children. Uh, in case of Krivirich, uh, the tolerable daily intake of dioxins is exceeded uh, six times for adults and almost 13 times for children. And on the conclusions, 
consumption of eggs from all three sampled sites leads to exceeding of tolerable daily intake of dioxins and do dioxin-like PCB by adults and children living in those polluted areas. Dioxins may be also present in other foodstuff from homegrown food, especially in animal diet, which is based on, on fat. Metallurgical industry, iron sintering plants, coke smelters, and other smelters, in addition also some hazardous waste co-incinerating cement kills, belong to major uh, sources of those di dioxins um, in the foodstuff. I can recommend some broader sampling in the area to get more comprehensive uh, picture about the scale and scope of the pollution. What I can uh, conclude based on the data we gathered is that daily consumption of free range poultry eggs cannot be recommended to citizens of three uh, pollution hotspots Kharkiv, Mariupol, and Krivirich. There are certain measures which should be applied at those places, uh, and uh, especially some uh, existing polluting technologies should be replaced by existing and economically feasible, best available technologies and practices. There is a lot of uh, supporting materials which can be of help in replacement of the existing technologies by better choices. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we uh, thank uh, Yitka for her presentation. The results are really impressive. Uh, I would like now to turn the floor over to uh, uh, Mr. Maxim Saroka, who is uh, the senior research science researcher uh, of uh, the uh, National University uh, of Railway Transport in Dnipropetrovsk. Uh, thank you, dear colleagues, for your presentation of this research. I would like to say that uh, this uh, research was not focused uh, uh, directly on uh, the uh, uh, emissions, uh, uh, pol polluting emissions of uh, the large industrial uh, enterprises and factories and plants and so on. Uh, we wanted uh, to uh, rather the, the, this research was uh, aimed at uh, its aim was uh, to measure the effects uh, damaging effects especially for the health of uh, children but uh, for o overall effects for uh, human health for example can can carcinogenous uh, carcinogenous uh, risks uh, in some places uh, uh, dozens of times uh, the accession uh, uh, of uh, the safe levels uh, was founded uh, exceeding dozens of times this Safe, uh, the safety norms. The presence of this uh, organic uh, resi resistant organic pollutants uh, is uh, also extremely dangerous. Uh, so, uh, being brief, uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, it was not the aim of this uh, research to find uh, those culpable, so to say, to put the blame on someone. But uh, again, this is a good uh, uh, reason for uh, us, this research is a good reason for us to call on the members of uh, the public at large, on the media, on uh, the non-governmental organizations and the government to take uh, urgent steps in order to improve the situation here. Uh, now the floor is uh, uh, given to uh, Ms. Yana Basista, who is an NGO representative of uh, uh, Detox Ukraine. They uh, were also collecting the data on uh, industrial uh, pollution all over Ukraine. Uh, thank you. We have not yet presented our data, but uh, we uh, have uh, been working on, on uh, it. I'm sure that the results of this um, research is uh, impressive. And uh, uh, for a lot of people, Ukraine is uh, perceived, especially by the local populations, Ukraine uh, has been perceived as a third world country with uh, uh, always and everywhere lacking funding for any uh, environmental protection measures. But uh, 
uh, that was uh, the the figure that uh, the national in, was allocated in the national budget was uh, 4.7 uh, billion hryvnias. Uh, uh, this year it's more than six billion uh, hryvnias. So it's not uh, we cannot say that it's a very small sum of money. So it's not the problem of funding, but rather uh, uh, inefficient uh, management or governance. The environmental protection uh, uh, funding has been uh, allocated for uh, the projects not directly related with environmental protection uh, purposes. So, uh, in our view, uh, project management uh, should be uh, introduced into uh, the environmental protection uh, 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 activities of uh, uh, Ukraine's government uh, governmental agencies. All the projects that are funded uh, from uh, the national uh, budget or local budgets, uh, uh, sh local authorities' budgets, uh, should be debated publicly and uh, uh, the uh, budgets and costs uh, should be published, uh, should be made available to the public. And also the reports on the implementation and results of the implementation of these projects. Therefore, I think that uh, there should be uh, the dialogue between the public and the government and the state of Ukraine, Ukrainian state. So better dialogue, better discussion, uh, better accountability. Uh, these are your conclusions. Now I would like to uh, turn the floor over to uh, Ms. Uh, Ambrosova, who is a representative of uh, the NGO from uh, uh, Kriberich and uh, Stop Poisoning uh, Krivoy Rog uh, was uh, the initiative uh, that uh, was pursued by this NGO. Uh, as we know, uh, Krivoy Rog has been one of the industrial centers uh, of the national uh, size, national scale uh, in Ukraine. Uh, now we have uh, ArcelorMittal uh, uh, Company Corporation uh, uh, that has acquired uh, the largest uh, uh, metal works uh, in uh, uh, Ukraine. And uh, uh, in this rating of the pollutants, uh, five uh, of the six most uh, heavy pollutant, uh, polluting, uh, pollutants uh, belong to uh, the, uh, or the, these are uh, the uh, uh, extrude, the uh, coal uh, and uh, uh, metal, uh, 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 metal uh, producing uh, factories, and the enrichment of uh, the uh, uh, raw materials for uh, metal uh, production, metal manufacturing. Uh, we had, for example, we uh, saw uh, the heavy concentrations of uh, pyrines uh, in uh, uh, the uh, rivers, in the water of uh, our rivers, and uh, in uh, the uh, sediments, bottom sediments of, the, of these rivers, and the other pollutants, uh, the heavy, some heavy metals. Uh, the, we have a lot of data, and all these data points to the need to uh, the urgent measures of uh, the for, aimed at reducing uh, the uh, pollution um, and emissions into. Uh, from uh, the large industrial uh, pollutants, and uh, uh, hence we have these effects uh, for uh, uh, the contaminated food, uh, including, for example, uh, the uh, hen eggs and the other food products. I would like now to give the floor to uh, Olena, uh, who is the representative from Zaporizhia. Uh, she represents one of the NGOs there. Uh, Zaporizhia is a large industrial uh, city, but it uh, has uh, uh, nowadays, after many uh, uh, decades of uh, intensive industrial development of the city, uh, the uh, heavy concentration, the large concentration of uh, industrial uh, plants, uh, uh, who are all, uh, which are all uh, heavy industrial pollutants, environmental pollutants, in the very central part of the city. Therefore, uh, the quality of air is affected, and according to the available statistics, uh, the emissions uh, uh, have been growing, uh, therefore causing the growth of mortality. 
and uh, uh, incidence of various uh, diseases related to uh, uh, industrial and environmental pollution. We do not have a single monitoring program in our city. Uh, no posts, no agencies or uh, entities dealing uh, with that. But we have uh, the health care program for our town uh, and uh, what we need is uh, uh, that uh, not only the public at large, but the government finally uh, uh, realizes that uh, uh, clean air and clean environment are the priorities. Irina, I would also like to point out that Ukraine, according to uh, the association agreement with the European Union, uh, is uh, supposed or uh, is uh, committed uh, to implement uh, a number of uh, directives, including uh, uh, Directive Number 75, uh, on uh, the uh, prevention of industrial pollution. Uh, the implementation of this uh, 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 directive uh, in Ukraine is at the stage of uh, the development of a concept for uh, this uh, prevention of industrial uh, pollution. The Ministry of Environmental Protection of Ukraine is in charge of uh, this uh, work. And uh, uh, as we know, uh, the draft of this concept uh, has been open for public discussion, so all the NGOs, all uh, the members of the public are invited to participate. According to this uh, directive, uh, using different uh, financial instruments, uh, uh, the uh, enterprises who pollute uh, the air, who pollute the environment, need to adopt uh, the best available uh, uh, environmental protection technologies. Besides, uh, uh, there is uh, now a reform of the uh, uh, State uh, Environmental Protection Service of Ukraine. Uh, the uh, monitoring instruments uh, have also been uh, reformed. And uh, we uh, hope that uh, this research and its result uh, should uh, be another indication uh, uh, pointing to the need uh, to continue the reforms of this uh, area and uh, to implement uh, the directive uh, that uh, I have mentioned, which contains uh, a rather uh, strict criteria, and we hope that uh, uh, here in Ukraine uh, this criteria will be adhered to, not uh, will be uh, uh, dissipated, so to say, in uh, various uh, or uh, uh, dissipated by various uh, documents, uh, laws and sub-laws and bylaws and so on. Uh, I also am a member of this coalition uh, Stop Poisoning Krivoi uh, Rig. Um, uh, I uh, know that there was a joint declaration signed uh, on the protection of uh, uh, the uh, rights, uh, environmental rights or ecological rights of all uh, the citizens of uh, the uh, countries, parties to that declaration. What is this declaration about and uh, what is it, uh, what's uh, its uh, contents? Well, there was uh, in Ostrava earlier this uh, year in uh, the uh, Czech Republic, there was a meeting uh, uh, of uh, the representatives of a number of organizations. Uh, uh, which uh, were uh, not only the uh, environmental protection issues uh, for the Czech Republic uh, uh, were debated, but also for uh, the other countries. And uh, the declaration uh, stated uh, the uh, very uh, pressing nature of uh, uh, environmental protection, uh, uh, the improvement of environmental protection efficiency, and uh, uh, it also contained a call to adopt the uh, best available technologies for environmental protection. Uh, maybe some of the colleagues would like to add uh, something to expand on that. Well, that declaration that was uh, uh, called uh, uh, Ostrava Declaration, uh, it has eight points uh, and uh, it was published on uh, the conference's website. Uh, it was signed by a number of uh, member countries of the EU and of uh, the Eastern uh, Membership, uh, uh, Eastern Neighborhood uh, uh, countries. 
and uh, as this uh, problem uh, is uh, uh, very uh, very uh, important and especially one of the aspects related to uh, the information uh, real time information about uh, the changes in environmental uh, situation it is uh, important to get uh, that information in real time not in the reports uh, a year later after some of uh, the uh, events uh, occurred the declaration also uh, stated the need uh, to establish uh, uniform uh, strict standards uh, to which all the companies and corporations and industrial uh, producers would be uh, would, would uh, will have to adhere uh, with uh, sometimes uh, even stricter than uh, the national legislations provide uh, in many countries I must say that this uh, declaration was born spontaneously, so to say. It was uh, uh, written on the proposal uh, of a colleague from Bosnia, but uh, uh, it was a cons there was a consensus about uh, the provisions of that declaration because uh, uh, the, <coughs> the participants uh, to the conference um, agree that even uh, in the industrially developed countries, uh, the environmental uh, protection uh, norms are not always uh, adhered to and uh, are observed strictly. Therefore, uh, we uh, signed that declaration in order to demonstrate that uh, we can uh, unify our efforts uh, uh, for the sake of better environmental protection. Um, one plus one, one TV channel. Uh, my question uh, uh, is uh, related to, uh, uh, first of all, uh, why uh, those five regions uh, of uh, Ukraine were selected for that research. Uh, the other, another question is, uh, if you have any, uh, if you have any data on the other situations, uh, uh, situation in the other areas and regions of Ukraine. Well, uh, these five uh, towns were selected because uh, these uh, are the most industrialized uh, countries uh, uh, where, with the highest concentration of uh, coal uh, manufacturing and uh, 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 metal uh, steel manufacturing uh, enterprises. Uh, I cannot answer uh, uh, your question, uh, uh, you know, with some precise data. It's difficult to say which of the regions is more polluted than the other. Uh, in each uh, area, there are some uh, nuances in terms of that. In one area, you can have higher concentration of uh, organic pollutants. In the other, of, of the heavy metals and so on. Uh, in your view, or according to your data, uh, what uh, enterprises are the heaviest pollutants? Uh, well, it's uh, chemical, organic chemistry uh, enterprises, it's uh, metalworks, uh, it's coal producing, coal production, and uh, 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 the extracting industries uh, enterprises. Are you planning uh, to include uh, Kiev, uh, Lviv, the larger, the large cities, the other large cities of Ukraine, uh, into the, your research uh, effort? Well, as of now, the scope of our research uh, is not uh, does not cover the. Uh, uh, western parts uh, of uh, Ukraine because uh, before that uh, they had been uh, the focus of a number of environmental researches and so the data is available for for those areas. Uh, recently uh, Chernigov was uh, uh, planned uh, for uh, this survey for this examination and research uh, uh, but uh, as far as the other cities are concerned, uh, Kiev uh, is also being discussed as a uh, place for uh, further research. But uh, again, nobody uh, prohibits uh, uh, conducting similar research in any area of uh, this uh, country. Uh, I would like to add that uh, academic potential, both of uh, Kiev and Lvov, uh, uh, is uh, s quite sufficient for, uh, uh, you know, uh, making these uh, similar researches in this area. 
information for citizens of those five polluted uh, regions because we believe that the right to know information about industrial pollution belong to uh, main and most important rights of uh, citizens. But uh, actually uh, the duty of uh, pollution monitoring should be transferred no, from non-governmental organization to polluters themselves and polluter pays principle applied at those uh, places. So definitely polluters in comparison with governments should be responsible for uh, monitoring efforts. Thank you. Сергій Кутняков, редактор Малої Академії, країна успіху. The Little Academy publication. Here we have the representatives of a number of industrial cities of the country. Are you aware of any sort of environmental protection strategies in any of your cities? Uh, for example, uh, there was a discussion some time ago uh, of uh, the water protection, uh, water resources protection strategy uh, for the Donbass, uh, the air protection, uh, air quality protection. Um, for example, uh, according to the Astava uh, Declaration, uh, it would be uh, worthwhile to have some initiatives of that sort uh, in Ukraine, especially in the most industrially polluted uh, areas. Well, uh, yes, uh, I can, uh, I'm aware that in a number of cities, uh, similar strategies uh, uh, have been developed, but uh, what I uh, need to point uh, out uh, is that uh, these strategies uh, should uh, not be uh, based on some outlandish assessments of uh, uh, the primary uh, goal of which is where to put uh, the money, where, how to spend them, and, and so on. We uh, need uh, to operate with uh, uh, real uh, data based on the results of the monitoring, environmental monitoring. Uh, if we do not identify the problems uh, correctly, we uh, are not able uh, to develop realistic and efficient and effective uh, plans uh, of uh, the improvement of environmental situation uh, in Ukraine. Therefore, what we need as at the first stage is a really independent environmental monitoring. Identification of the points of uh, pollution uh, most intense pollution, first of all, and then uh, start developing uh, the countermeasures, so to say. Are there any examples in Ukraine, or maybe in some other countries, of uh, the industrial enterprises th uh, that have already uh, put in place some uh, environmental protection uh, technologies and uh, installations? Uh, which is currently being discussed in Ukraine is a very crucial piece of legislation which can improve significantly the situation. It's uh, based on experience which was uh, made in the Czech Republic and other European countries. With this legislation it's possible to monitor existing uh, technologies uh, at the factories uh, to find what technologies can be improved, what filters, what particular filters filters, cleaning mechanism, uh, dust and fumes, collection systems should be applied for the particular uh, branch of uh, industry and the process of replacing the existing technologies by better um, and improved one um, um, realized. So definitely integrated pollutant and, uh, 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 and prevention control. Uh, on example of the Czech Republic, we for example had huge chloroalkali plant which used mercury uh, in their processes and thanks to this piece of legislation they replace this uh, technology based on uh, mercury with uh, a better available one which is not releasing a huge amount of mercury into the river and surrounding environment. And this is really evidence on the numbers and uh, solid data. Також у нас коментар від Ані Амбросової. В рамках Чешской островской конференции нам организовали... 
uh, within that conference in Ostrava, we uh, were given an opportunity to visit one of the factories uh, in Ostrava. If, in fact, it was a metalworks, a big metalworks uh, uh, plant. And uh, we uh, visited uh, the blast furnace uh, uh, part of the enterprise or, uh, workshop of that enterprise and uh, the converter uh, furnaces. Uh, and as uh, uh, we in uh, uh, Zaporozhye, in Krivoyrog, uh, Krivoyrog are being uh, told that uh, the converters cannot be equipped, for example, with any filtering or any environmental protection uh, uh, devices or plants, we saw in Ostrava that uh, it, it is absolutely possible, it's done in Ostrava, and uh, in Ostrava, we were told that, yes, about 10 years ago, we also had these uh, huge uh, brown fumes. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, again, this is an issue uh, that uh, was, uh, has already been mentioned, that uh, dozens of millions uh, were uh, allegedly spent for environmental protection, while in fact they were not. They have not have not been uh, spent for environmental protection uh, measures. In Ostrava, it was uh, indeed there was indeed uh, the modernization, uh, environmentally friendly modernization, made uh, in a number of plants. And uh, there you have these uh, converter and uh, blast furnaces uh, uh, work. Uh, works uh, equipped with all necessary uh, filtering uh, uh, equipment, all necessary filters, so their emissions uh, are close to zero. I would like also to uh, draw your attention to the fact that if uh, these statistics on the improvement of, uh, of environmental protection uh, in Ukraine uh, is uh, uh, can also also contra the contradiction is uh, that the number the incidence of the diseases grow is growing in Ukraine. If uh, these uh, uh, funds were have been spent effectively, then the incidence would decrease would have decreased, but uh, it uh, it doesn't. Well, again, uh, this uh, plant uh, that uh, we compared, that we made comparison, this Ostrava uh, Metalworks, was uh, constructed uh, more than 100, uh, was founded more than 100 years ago. So uh, it's not younger than uh, the metalworks in Mariupol or uh, in Zaporozhye or uh, in uh, Dnipropetrovsk or the other uh, uh, towns, industrial towns of Ukraine. At the beginning, it was said uh, that uh, that the purpose of their research uh, was to inform the citizenry, uh, uh, first of all. Uh, so what are the next steps as you envisage them? Uh, uh, so the citizens can see the results, uh, but uh, if uh, w would it at least affect uh, the uh, perception of the gravity of the problem? Because uh, in Ukraine, corruption, especially political corruption, is uh, uh, perceived as uh, the problem number one, as the cause of all uh, 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 troubles. Well, uh, let me answer with this question. Certainly, uh, nature and its preservation uh, is uh, important. And uh, indeed, people perceive uh, 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 corruption in the government of Ukraine as the heaviest, uh, the most uh, heavy problem, most difficult to tackle. And uh, at the same time, we uh, understand that uh, a healthy natural environment uh, is uh, uh, important too. So, uh, at least with this data or this data of this research uh, would help uh, the public, uh, the members of the public, to understand that if their children uh, consume the eggs uh, where they have uh, 12 times uh, higher concentration of the pollutants uh, than it is uh, than is safe to consume, uh, they might uh, as well become uh, concerned uh, with that problem. So by publishing this uh, data, uh, we uh, try to make uh, this, you know, general uh, understanding uh, 
of the environmental uh, protection, of the need for environmental protection, into the dimension where people acknowledge the, some practical needs of some practical uh, actions uh, for the improvement of envir environmental protection as soon as possible. We uh, are going to uh, hold a round table uh, where we, uh, to which we have invited the representatives of the Ministry of Environment and also of the private companies, and we are going to discuss uh, with them uh, what's uh, to be done. Um, uh, during your, pre I'm from uh, Krivirik. Uh, during the presentation, you uh, mentioned a number of uh, figures, uh, a number of data characterizing the pollution of uh, the sand, for example, in uh, the, pl the children's playground. But I was uh, particularly impressed by uh, this uh, pollution of uh, the eggs uh, of uh, the hands uh, of the hand eggs. So uh, the uh, the. Uh, 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 concentration exceeded there 12 times the safe limit, uh, if I understood you correctly. Uh, so, uh, could you tell us uh, what uh, are the other most uh, heavy uh, uh, levels, most, most uh, the highest level of pollutions, and in which in which towns and of what with what substances, with what pollutants? Observed examples from uh, three different pollution hotspots, Kharkiv, Mariupol, Krivirich. And we can also make some basic comparison with other industrial uh, regions um, uh, in Europe. Uh, but I have to say that the scale of egg pollution in Krivirich belongs to uh, one of the highest which we have observed um, uh, in our um, um, past research over a few years. And, uh, but to some extent, it demonstrates that uh, coke plants, metallurgy, uh, chemical industry, which operates with uh, weak technologies, belong to main uh, pollution sources of dioxins uh, into the environment. So to some extent, it's not surprising weak technologies in these in industries are the main sources of, of dioxins, of persistent organic pollutant, but the results are um, very alarming. Uh, yeah, uh, so dioxins uh, are uh, accumulating in the human body. There are no mechanism of their um, release. Uh, and they, they are also lipophilic, so they are uh, bound to uh, fat tissue in our body. So, for, for example, that when mother breastfeeds uh, her child, those dioxins are being transmitted through uh, breastfeeding. Uh, chlorinated dioxins are known for carcinogenic effects effect, for adverse effect to, uh, uh, to uh, fetus, uh, uh, to neurological effects, uh, so on. Yeah. Uh, thank you. My name is Oleksii, uh, and uh, people have already asked uh, what I wanted to ask you about. But again, uh, you uh, spoke in your research about uh, the effect for human health uh, uh, of uh, these levels of pollution. Uh, uh, I, I would like to ask if uh, you have worked out any specific recommendations with uh, regard to uh, human health. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, we do not uh, yet practically have any serious uh, legislation, uh, environmental protection legislation. We only uh, are starting to uh, to develop similar legislation. Uh, uh, therefore, it is impossible to prove uh, uh, in uh, a, in a court of law uh, any relationship between uh, industrial pollution and the deterioration of uh, one's health. People are told uh, by the judges that they uh, have some problems uh, because they were smoking or uh, because, uh, you know, some similar things. Uh, uh, especially as far as uh, the growth of uh, uh, cancer, uh, the scale of the growth of cancer uh, in the, this country is particularly uh, alarming. 
so uh, if uh, you have can, can somehow be establish the relationship uh, the direct uh, relationship between uh, the incidence uh, of certain diseases and the levels of uh, uh, pollutants concentration of pollutants uh, in uh, the food products and the other uh, uh, natural habitat so to say of the human beings oh, well uh, i can uh, tell you that uh, i uh, heard uh, uh, recently a representative from italy uh, uh, speaking there at the Stava conference, and he said that it was equally impossible uh, to uh, prove uh, similar cases uh, in Italian courts, uh, that uh, people were unable to prove uh, the uh, industrial pollution as a reason for the deterioration of their health and get any compensation or redress in any way their, uh, their uh, damages. For example, uh, in Ukraine we have uh, frequent instances when people have uh, heart attacks or, or strokes or something, and uh, b due to uh, these uh, pr presence of heavy pollutants in, in uh, their environment. But uh, it's, the situation remains uh, such that it is indeed impossible uh, yet in Ukrainian courts to prove any, any relations and any cause, uh, any relation between the causes and, and the effects. Well, certainly it's within uh, the uh, responsibility of the uh, Ukrainian government, of the state, uh, to, uh, you know, to establish this uh, legislation and norms and... Uh, would you speak into the microphone, uh, please? Well... Uh, I mean that uh, the ministry, for example, says uh, that uh, uh, they uh, develop new uh, uh, laws, uh, new bills, but uh, so far uh, the environmental protection uh, uh, system in Ukraine is uh, next to uh, uh, non-existent. For example, the uh, representatives of uh, the environment, environmental protection service uh, can come to uh, an industrial enterprise and uh, they are not just being let into the territory and they uh, turn around and go away. That's how it happens. Uh, and so since 2003, when the first uh, uh, bill uh, started to be developed, but uh, since that time, uh, nothing has uh, changed. Well, uh, at that roundtable uh, that uh, was uh, mentioned, uh, uh, it's going to be, these things uh, are going to be uh, discussed, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, our research does not uh, uh, have uh, these recommendations that, for example, the reduction of this pollutant would uh, uh, reduce uh, levels of uh, uh, sneezing or something like that, or cough, uh, coughing or, or things like that, uh, like... Uh, f the the uh, goal was to, and this is a an inter uh, this is international practice. First, to establish to identify the areas uh, where uh, there are the highest levels of uh, uh, incidence of most serious diseases, uh, uh, lethal diseases like uh, cancer and uh, things like that. Uh, that's because uh, uh, in Ukraine, uh, this uh, convention that uh, you mentioned, uh, Ukrainian legislation does not uh, Ukraine is not a signatory to that convention. Uh, so Ukrainian medical statistics uh, uh, is not, uh, uh, so to say, uh, mandatory. Its collection is not mandatory and its analysis is not mandatory. Well, if we uh, see this catastrophic state of uh, environmental protection in Ukraine, why uh, the and uh, the reluctance of the government and of the businesses uh, to invest in environmental protection? How uh, at all? If if uh, how can at all any measures be uh, uh, done uh, in order to improve uh, environmental protection in this country? Well, I can uh, say that uh, answer uh, your question by saying that the state is, uh, so to say, it's a mechanism with uh, a large inertia. On one hand, it's good because it means a certain level of stability, but on the other hand, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's this understanding of uh, the importance of uh, the nature and natural conditions and environment for uh, human health, uh, it's uh, gaining traction, and uh, I hope that sometime, uh, in, in some time, uh, 
uh, hopefully soon in the future, uh, there would uh, some uh, social uh, demand, so to say, demand in, in the society for better envir environment uh, uh, can be formed. Uh, and uh, as it happened in the other countries, like, for example, first of all, the population of industrial uh, uh, towns, uh, their awareness uh, uh, reaches a certain level and they initiate some action. Uh, when people started uh, uh, organizing manifestations and, and meetings and uh, discussions and so on. So when uh, probably uh, it uh, is going to happen uh, uh, likewise in this country, when people feel the effects for themselves, damaging effects for their own health, uh, they, start, uh, they will start reacting somehow. Well, I can uh, add as a psychologist uh, uh, this uh, uh, so-called syndrome of educated uh, uh, in, um, inactiveness, indifference. It's very uh, present, it's very much present in, among Ukrainian population. In September uh, of uh, uh, this year, there was a research uh, that showed uh, that uh, about 14 million Ukrainians acknowledged uh, uh, the insufficiency of information on uh, uh, the uh, on their environment, on the uh, status of their environment, natural environment. So, what uh, you mentioned, the uh, percentage of the population that becomes aware of uh, this problem is growing, and. Uh, the uh, problem now is uh, to uh, collect and to analyze valid and uh, correct, accurate information. Therefore, I invite you also to uh, join in uh, these efforts, uh, because it's uh, not only our lives, uh, it's uh, the future of our children, it's our health and their health. Uh, so it all depends on, uh, on uh, the Ukrainian uh, you know, uh, society itself, on, on the people themselves. Well, you, uh, you mentioned uh, you were a lawyer, I, I think. Uh, you should understand then uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, these changes uh, in Ukrainian legislation uh, that are underway now, uh, I would describe as uh, incredibly uh, intense. Uh, so we, what we need to do is only not to uh, to uh, is only to provide for high quality of uh, of uh, this uh, legislation and the elimination of any uh, uh, lack of transparency because when it comes uh, to uh, uh, spending the funds especially from the national budget uh, ukraine's experience is such that uh, uh, there are always a lot of people willing to uh, you know to embezzle or to misspend uh, uh, these funds so as far uh, when when you have uh, when you personally encounter uh, any instance of uh, the breach of your environmental uh, uh, rights uh, uh, you uh, can just go directly to the ministry of justice and uh, inform them first of all that's one of the uh, practical ways of of uh, you know reacting to uh, these uh, uh, violations uh, any more questions please well, uh, as the proverb goes, uh, the salvage of uh, those who drown uh, is in the hands or is the business of those who drown, mostly. That's uh, how it is in our country. Are there any effective mechanism uh, uh, of uh, countering the uh, abuse uh, of uh, or the lack of action both uh, by uh, the government and uh, by the uh, uh, businesses, by the industrial uh, manufacturers? For example, uh, for as long as uh, some uh, environmental pollution uh, is uh, caused by the operation of an enterprise, this enterprise should be prohibited uh, to operate unless uh, or for as long as this uh, enterprise install uh, necessary environmental protection measures. Uh, we, for example, know that uh, uh, in uh, Krivi Rig, uh, you as, the, as a psychologist know that uh, in some areas where people living around some uh, large uh, uh, enterprises, uh, they are even uh, psychologically depressed. Uh, uh, so if uh, uh, 
these uh, methodologies of, of measuring uh, these damages uh, can uh, be uh, are, are applied. And for example, uh, a mass uh, action, uh, court action, uh, can uh, be initiated. Like for example, uh, 90,000 members of the public sign a petition and initiate a court uh, uh, case. Uh, otherwise, uh, neither the businesses nor the, st the government uh, of Ukraine would react and uh, would uh, start investing money in environmental protection. Uh, Yitka uh, has uh, uh, her com uh, comment. Uh, to, to transform the existing technologies with newer ones. And in addition to that, there is another tool which is widely implemented uh, in European countries, which is called um, a pollutant release and transfer register. And this is database of um, industrial emission to air, water, soil and waste. And all polluters, there are certain rules who, who have have the duty uh, to to publish the data in the database, but in, in general, the main polluters have the duty to publish their data on emission into different uh, environmental compartments, and those data are then publicly available. And public can do, uh, for example, a process of establishing top tens of the biggest polluters, which creates great pressure on those polluters because no one wants to be at the first position of the worst uh, industrial companies in the country, and it creates great uh, public push to, uh, uh, to to the changes of the existing technologies. Yeah. Oh, I would also like uh, to remind you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that you have uh, uh, the handouts uh, and uh, the printouts of the materials of this research at uh, the entrance to this conference hall. And uh, uh, you, uh, we also have... Uh, uh, the printed uh, text of this research, not uh, all the circulation uh, has been printed uh, uh, yet, but uh, some of the copies are already available. Or otherwise, you can print it out for yourselves. Uh, uh, the access uh, online uh, is uh, uh, already uh, today is, is uh, there. Thank you all for your attention.